It's part two of a full video review of the LG Optimus G Pro, a phone that in a lot of ways can compete with the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com. Let's put it to its paces in part two and see if it comes out on top. It's part two of the full video review of the LG Optimus G Pro. This is the international version, but it's coming very soon to AT&T, May 10th to be exact, for I think $199 if I recall. So a nice price point, and finally something that gives the Galaxy Note 2 a run for its money in the tablet space, or tablet phone space, I should say. It's finally the something there, although it's only available on AT&T. It's a carrier exclusive, so if you're looking for a tablet phone on T-Mobile or Verizon, you're gonna still be relegated to the Galaxy Note 2. Not to say that it's a bad thing, I carry the Note 2 for a long time and happen to enjoy it quite a bit, but like this phone a lot because it brings the specifications up to par with some of the current hot devices, the Galaxy S4 and the HTC One, just to name a few. Before I get too far into part two of the review, I wanna thank our partners at GSM Nation for hooking us up with this device. Thanks to them, go to gsm uh, excuse me, gsmnation.com if you can and take a look if you wanna see an unlocked device or take a look at their inventory, maybe buy something for yourself or your family if you're into those unlocked devices. They've got a great selection right over there at GSM nation.com and also want to thank our partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices very similar to the Optimus G Pro and I imagine when the AT&T version comes out literally the Optimus G Pro for you Star One Paul Bandit giveaway game when you go into Best Buy Mobile you'll walk out working they'll get your email your web and contact set up so if you buy this for mom for example they'll get all our apps ready to go so all she does is walk out the door and she's working and able to make phone calls and do those text messaging threads and recipes, etc. Part two here of the video review, and I wanna jump back in where I left off in part one, and that was with the software. Now, much like the Galaxy Note 2, this device does bring some productivity things to the table, and then one of those is something, and actually quite a few of them you've seen very similar versions on the Galaxy Note 2, but I wanna show you LG's version. So for example, I'm viewing a video here. I can bring it out, as you see right here, and it's called Q-Slide Guide, or Q-Slide rather, and Q-Slide Guide is here. Move and resize, and then I've got to improve multitasking. So I can multitask with the video, move it around, and resize it as I see fit. So not only can I move it, then I can click on it, and also make it larger if I want to, and make it up here, for example. And I can go home and continue to watch it, and it just plays right there in its own little bubble. Now I can resize that around if I see fit, and I've got a couple of different options down here as well. Boom, I can bring up the video page. And then when I'm done, I can get rid of it and I can make it transparent using that slider as well. Should point that out. Q slide, bam. And then I can make it transparent. Come back here. Come back here. Move it down a little bit. Click on it. And as you can see there, now it's more transparent on the screen. It's a little bit harder to see, but if that's something you want to do, you can do that and have it playing in the background. Now this is a 1080p HD display and much like the other 1080p devices we've reviewed, it's absolutely gorgeous. The colors pop, this background wallpaper that I have on this device is fantastic. Love the way that it looks and it goes head to head against the HTC One, the Galaxy S4 and the Droid DNA and all these other 1080p devices on the market. Really impressed with the overall performance here, how fast it is, the responsiveness on screen is great and then the display is absolutely gorgeous as well. So no lag on this device, continuing from what I was talking about in part one. The Snapdragon 600 processor runs really well here. It's a quad core 1.7 gigahertz CPU. And this thing has two gigs of RAM and a 3,140 milliamp hour battery as well, which we'll talk about in just a second. Really impressed with the battery size. Love my Note 2's 3,100 milliamp hour battery. When I was working with it as uh, extendedly as a long-term device, extendedly is not even a word. Extended as a long-term device, I should say. It's all right, I make up words in videos, it happens. And then, uh, my bad jokes just continue along, friends, continue along. And so here it is, again, very fast all around. So the display looks good. What My point that I was trying to get at when I was saying that, videos look great all around, and so do pictures. Everything looks good. Speaking of, it's got a 13 megapixel camera here that I'll jump into in just a second. But those productivity features like that, and then of course, Q memo, which we can use as much as you want to, and you can take screenshots and send those off to your friends via the share function up here or via the save function, you save it in your notebook for later, and it's quick and easy to use. And that's the shortcut button over here. Now you can change the, what the shortcut button does as well. So in addition to the Q slide app, you got videos, TV, internet, memo, and then Q voice. So we'll go into internet, for example, 
and you can multitask with the internet as well. So a lot of different options to multitask here. It's a little bit of a different functionality than the Galaxy Note 2, just in the fact that the QSlide apps are up here. Bring out calculator if I want to, and I can kind of move these around in the display and customize the size, make it a little bit smaller, make it a little bit larger. So I've got the ability to multitask, but it's a little bit different than the multitasking bar over on the Galaxy Note 2, just comparing apples to apples here with customization and with multitasking. So got my multitasking bar, as you can see right here. A little bit different from the overall functionality, and you, can, you should be able to maximize, if it's an application that works correctly, you should be able to maximize the screen real estate here and kind of get one on top and kind of one on bottom. But otherwise, I kind of prefer the Note 2's look and feel just because you can easily resize within the actual display. So still pretty cool here. Nice to see a different implementation. Calendar, can bring it up. Oh, maximum number of windows is already open. Calendar, Shazam, got my calendar right there. And then within these, I can operate real time. As I see fits, I can load up phonedog.com, for example. Phonedog.com, and speaking of, you're taking a look at the keyboard on the 5.5 inch display. It has a dedicated number row, and then of course a full QWERTY keyboard here with your settings from or on the device itself, rather. So I can do that, I can expand it out when I'm ready to use my full browser, and you can see portrait to landscape transitions are nice and fast. Now, like I said in part one and in part two, this is intended to be a content creation device. So whether you're consuming all kinds of data or consuming, well, you're probably consuming data too, but consuming media, be it browsing the web, watching videos, this screen is intended for consumption. So browsing the web, watching all those YouTube videos, this is the kind of device you buy and you watch my videos on YouTube. How surreal would it be if you bought this and then watched the review on this? Cray cray, as the kids say and as Aaron Baker says, cray cray. Or maybe it's just one cray. Anyway, pinch to zoom, very responsive. Phonedog.com, and of course I can load up multiple browsers, browser windows I should say, as I see fit, and see my Google Plus profile. Keyboard's pretty nice in this device. LG's keyboard continues to improve, and of course you can download third-party alternatives through Google Play, which is right here. And just to give you an idea of what the new Play Store looks like on a giant 5.5 inch display, there it is right there. Now take a look at Quadrant Standard here and then we'll wrap it out with camera. I'm not going to do a speed test because this is an unlocked device. It's not running AT&T's 4G LTE, so it would be kind of a pointless speed test to do it on an unlocked device and I'm never really comfortable doing that because it can vary depending on your APNs, for example, within an unlocked device as opposed to an AT&T branded unit. So international version here, running Quadrant Standard right now with that 1.7 gigahertz quad core CPU, two gigs of RAM, so I mean this thing is a powerhouse all around when it comes to performance. Call quality's been decent as well. I've made some test calls in this device and been pretty pleased with the overall quality of the device. And then I like the look and feel. Like I said, it's easy to hold in the hand. It does. It is obviously a fingerprint magnet, as you can see here, and it does pick up those fingerprints pretty quickly, but still really nice to hold in the hand. Fits pretty well in the hand and easy to hold up against the ear for long-term conversations. So Quadrant Standard's wrapping up right now, and we'll take a look at this and see what score we come out with. Snapdragon 600 has been doing pretty well in the Quadrant Standard testing, and it's no slouch here. 11,347 over on this device. So, falls a little short of the HTC One, the Galaxy S4's 12,000 plus scores, but still very impressive. And as I always say, Quadrant Standard really isn't the best indicator of day-to-day -day performance. It's a good benchmark for nerds and for geeks that love that kind of stuff on video, hopefully such as yourself, such as me. But you know, for day-to-day -day performance, I've been incredibly pleased with how fast this device moves. Little to no lag whatsoever. Everything's pretty quick, as you can see. You know, no stutter whatsoever on this device. And LG's user interface continues to work pretty well. Overall, pretty impressed with this device. We'll wrap it out by taking a look at camera. And we'll go ahead and, yes, I know how the camera works. Thank you very much. Settings, edit quick menu, voice shutter, flash, brightness, focus. That's what happens when you reset a device and forget to go back through all the settings on video or prior to shooting a video, I should say. Front-facing camera, hello. And then of course you've got this where I can say the following words to take pictures, kimchi, LG, smile, whiskey, cheese. I feel like I'm calling out something like call signs or, uh, or runway things. I feel like I'm air traffic control. We'll try this here though. And we'll take a picture of, since it's over here already, in preparation for a dog fight. We'll take a picture. Uh, let's get it focused in on the note two part. Kimchi. Cheese, kimchi, kimchi, cheese, whiskey, whiskey, yeah, whatever. And so it did work the first time. I'm not quite sure why it doesn't work a second time in a row, but maybe it was something I was doing. 
I'm not perfect by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to this stuff. Camera there, image quality looks pretty good. 13 megapixel shooter, pretty decent all around on this device. Galaxy Note 2 focuses in pretty well. And then of course you've got some settings here, HDR, panorama, VR panorama, burst shot, beauty shot, and you got your dual camera as well. Look familiar? Galaxy S4 territory right here. So again, you think it's new, you think it's something that Samsung's pioneered much like Apple. It's been around since at least Mobile World Congress. And so I took a picture of my happening unboxing pocket knife. And boom, I can take my pictures and I can move that around as I see fit within the shot as you saw in the camera right there. So I've got my dual shot, I'll go back to that dual camera. And then I can tap it to move back and forth. Now I can't customize the size of it, it looks like. But what I can do is tap it and move it back and forth pretty easy, uh, quickly and easily. So I'll go to dual camera again. And I've got beauty shot, I've got burst shot, which is one of my favorites. And then of course got dual camera as well. And I wanna go back and say, yeah, tap and touch the small screen to resize it. There we go. I knew there was a way to resize it. I thought I remembered that. So I can take up as much of this picture as I want to. And then there is obviously a bigger picture. So cool, cool camera features here, 1080p HD video recording as well. In conclusion, I like this device a lot. I'm excited it's coming to AT&T. The downside is if you're not on AT&T, if you're on Verizon or T-Mobile, for example, and you want a device like this, you're kind of out of luck. You're gonna have to go with the Galaxy Note 2 because this is an AT&T exclusive that's coming to the state. So if you're on T-Mobile, you could obviously get an unlocked one and bring it over and use some of the frequencies that T-Mobile offers. But if you're on Verizon, you're on Sprint, fortunately right now, it is Note 2 territory and Note 2 alone. And it's a great device, don't get me wrong. I actually carried it as my personal device for six months prior to switching to other devices and not when I was on a 30-day challenge. But pretty impressed with this device all around. Like the price point, they're finally up to par and it's finally an LG device in the US that can compete. It really is an LG super phone. The specs are good. The availability is on AT&T, so at least it's on one carrier. I would love to see it on more, but availability on at least a carrier in the States, great specs, and finally something that can compete, i.e. not the revolution. This is something that can compete with the Note 2. It's got specs that are up to par and actually have surpassed the Note 2 in a lot of ways. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage. I'm excited about this device. I think it'll be good for AT&T, good for people that want something but maybe don't like Samsung or don't care for that particular build quality or the way it looks or you like the black color a little bit more than you do the gray color on Samsung's Galaxy Note 2. Whatever the case may be, the specs are good, the price point's good. I expect this to sell pretty well on AT&T. I'm on Twitter at PhoneDog underscore Aaron. Facebook, Facebook.com slash Hi Aaron Baker. Google Plus, GPlus.to slash PhoneDog. Thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you next time.